Coaches, this is Mike Kuchar, www.xnolabs.com. This week we'll be talking you through a video tutorial of the Auburn Power Read concept. It's a very popular concept today in football, mostly attributed to Gus Malzahn, the offensive coordinator at Auburn this past year, and it's, it's really catching fire amongst higher levels of college football, and it has a trickle-down effect into the high school level as well. You know, there's there's different concepts you could run with it today. What I'd like to do is I have seven clips on the uh, the read concept, and the first couple clips are more of a what we referred to last week as the flash motion concept, where there really isn't a gap scheme. Uh, offensive line blocks one way, and the uh, ball carrier runs a different way, and, and the quarterback does read the front side end. So some some coaches refer to it as an inverted veer. So what I'd like to do first is show you this. This is uh, South Carolina versus Auburn early on in the year. Of course, Cam Newton had a tremendous day at quarterback for Auburn. Um, really, really put them. It was a, it was a tight game. Uh, offenses went back and forth, but Auburn wound up winning and really put them on the map offensively. First play we're going to look at is I have a two by two set. It is a flash sweep by Auburn with a front side read for the quarterback. So you see here, and the difference is last week we, we, we took you through um, a series of flash sweep and jet sweep by a slot receiver here, which is more of a, a pre-snap movement. This is a post-snap movement by that tailback, which you're seeing over here. And this is, of course, a tremendous play by the quarterback. Winds up scoring a touchdown here. You're going to see a six-man box. It's going to be some rotation of man-free by South Carolina. You're going to see the offensive line work back away from the point of attack and a front side end. We, I just want you to notice as the game goes on, as early on the game, is pretty much in a tight alignment to that play side tackle. There's the motion post snap. There's the read. Okay, you're going to see here you're going to end up with two C-gap players, both falling for the motion man or, or I should say the um, the the jet man quarterbacks can see the open seam taken and go match one on one with free safety it's a win for the offense so again no backside pull there it's just a tr typical flash sweep now this is more of an unbalanced set okay or heavy formation for Auburn okay you have two Two players on the line of scrimmage here. Tackle over. Okay, three-man surface. This is short yardage. You see by the sticks here. It's second and looks like one. Now, this is the power concept. It's just not a read principle. Short yardage, a lot of teams will do this on short yardage, we found, just to make sure they get the yardage that they need. One thing we've talked with a bunch of coaches in, in just discussing that this player must go full speed on the snap in order to sell that jet fake or that, that outside zone fake, whatever your terminology is. So the end man line of scrimmage is going to be blocked by the sniffer or the fullback, and you're going to see a crease and regular gap scheme up front by the offensive line. You know, South Carolina is having a hard time getting lined up here. Okay, so that was the traditional one was the flash sweep concept, okay, and this is, that, that other one was more of a, of, of a power concept. Okay, now we're going to see an odd front by South Carolina out of two deep, okay, again, you know, it looks like third and long here by Hubbard, and they're pulling the trigger on this power concept, it's, it's, it's a good call when you need it out of a two-by-two two set. And this is the flash concept. You know, we just think we've we've talked to numerous coaches. We just think it's just it's a tremendous concept. As long as this player knows he has to run full speed on the snap, and you know, number 23 has been the main player for Auburn this year running it. They they predominantly have him run it. He's he's a speedier player than the other back they had in the backfield this year, and he's very productive when he does get that carry, which we'll see. So again, offensive lines blocked one way. There's a flash sweep, gets the end out of the picture, huge crease for the quarterback. Okay, so now we're going to get to the power read concept. 
Okay, we're going to have a trips formation to the field here by Auburn. I'm going to get a six box by South, uh, South Carolina. Now, we really haven't had much of a preference in terms of where coaches want to run the play. Here, they're going to run a two to three technique side. So, blocking rules resemble power blocking rules. Split tackle or the, the weak, the front play side tackle is responsible for B gap to backside backer. Okay. Uh, guards responsible for A gap to backside backer. Okay. Center is going to have that back block for the pulling guard. Skip pull technique is used. We found that a lot of coaches are using, in fact, when we did our power report. Um, two months ago, which is now up on www.xnolabs.com. We found that the skip-pull technique is more preferred now among coaches at high school and college level, which we'll see over here. Okay, the backside tackle is going to gap, seal, and hinge, protect the B-gap. You have that motion coming across on the snap, that, that fast flow, and the quarterback's going to read the front side end, who's now more of a wide technique. Okay, tremendous double team here. Backside guard is going to pull and block the first play side linebacker, which is going to be right here. Of course, this is the read. We do not want to block the read as the play side guard, or the backside guard, excuse me, on the pull. Okay, just tremendous cutback by the quarterback. I realize that we all may not have number two calling the signals for us, but a very productive play regardless if we have a quarterback. Okay, trips formation to the field here again. We're going to have a six box by South Carolina. They're going to run it to the boundary. I just a tremendous, tremendous down block here. You get that great angle blocking. Okay, this is the read. The quarterback has to make a decision. Okay, is he going to go with the fast flow or is he going to sit and have the quarterback take it up inside? Big read for the quarterback here. Okay, and the backside guard is going to pull and block the first place side linebacker. Okay, and this is always a great situation when you have the defensive end holding start hard outside for that fast flow and a linebacker coming way over the top. I mean, it's a tough deal for this this kid or this player in order to take on that backside guard. Just huge, huge hole there. Okay, another trips formation. Okay, again, to the three technique. Okay, right here, good double team to the three technique. They should be working back to the backside backer. Center's blocking back for the backside guard who's going to pull and block number one. Very wide position for number one, and, and, and here's the difference now. This defensive end is now going to, you know, South Carolina has made adjustments. This defensive end is now going to close, okay, and he's going to stay tight to the line of scrimmage where this player now becomes almost that alley player. And watch what happens. Okay, this block is important. I'm going to show you that you get a better view of that. But it, when you want to give the ball to that back, that block becomes essential. So what we're going to see now here is we, we've seen enough of the power read concept with the quarterback taking the ball. Now we're going to see out of trips to the field, this number three receiver. Now it's a predetermined call. He wants to give the ball. I mean, you know, we don't have number two in the backfield like we talked about, but if the quarterback's getting beat up a little bit, now you have the option to give to the tailback on the fast flow. So what we're going to do is, and all the receivers are blocking most dangerous man, man on, man on. Now the number three receiver is going to crack and block the first play side linebacker. Okay, this is especially advantageous out of two deep because now you have the safety being the plus one or bonus player being unblocked, and he's coming down from a long way. Okay, so there it is. Sniffs him out. And again, I don't know how much Auburn is reading this based on that adjustment they made by the number three receiver. I'm assuming this is, this is going to be good regardless. Wide five technique here. Stacked outside backer, stacked inside backer. Okay, blocking scheme stays the same. It's a gap blocking scheme. He's still going to pull and block the front side backer. Okay, as you see, he's not going to be there. Okay, he's out with the with the motion, but he's going to be clipped by number three. So it's a big adjustment by Auburn. That's productive for him. So there you have it. little tutorial on the Auburn power read meshed with the flash or jet sweep concept. Um, 
MikeKuchar, www.xnolabs.com. We like to hear how you do it. So feel free to log in and tell us about some adjustments you make if you do run the Auburn or any Power Read concept.